I want to I want to try to understand here. Is it your view that society is too hard on sex offenders? You say they truly are shunned in society. You wrote that many of these laws are products of a climate of fear, hatred, and revenge. So just is that is that still your view? I mean, do you think that these that these laws are too tough, that we're too tough on sex offenders. Explain what you meant. In this case, in 2013, and it seems to be the same thing you said many years ago. Senator, it's not the same thing I said many years ago. Many years ago, as a law school student, I was evaluating a new set of legislation, state laws about registration, and I was analyzing them as law students do wasn't about the sex crime, it was about the characterization of the law. Is it a punitive law? Is it a prescriptive law? And how would a court go about determining that? That was the frame that I used then. It could have been about anything. It was about the characterization of legislation. But could I, just to, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I've only got two and a half minutes left, but I just want to make sure I understand this. This is, I'm quoting from your conclusion now. This is on page 1732, 1728 of the, of the Harvard Law Review. This is your conclusion. In the current climate of fear, hatred, and revenge associated with the release of convicted sex criminals, courts need to be especially attentive to legislative enactments. So you, that's a conclusory statement. You're saying that there is a climate of fear, hatred, and revenge that are informing these laws. And you described some of the laws earlier, I think, Megan's Law and others. Senator Cruz asked you about some of those. I, I, I just am trying to understand what you meant by that, because you're saying something similar in the Hawkins case. You're saying that society truly shuns our sex offenders. Sorry, Senator, sorry. Um, with all due respect, my uh, article is now in the record. People can read it, and they can see that I was evaluating these laws not to determine their constitutionality, not to uh, say that they shouldn't be enacted, but to talk about the ways in which courts make determinations about the character of the law and all of the consequences that follow from them. In law school, I had not had any uh, experience in in terms of the criminal justice system, and I was doing what law students do, which is uh, seeking to analyze in a creative way new legislation. With respect to Mr. Hawkins, I was doing what judges do, which is look at the statute, 18 U.S.C. 3553A, exercise discretion as Congress has required us to do, take into account all of the various aspects of a particular case and make a determination consistent with my authority, my judgment, and understanding fully the egregious nature of the crime. As you said, even the prosecutors in these cases are not recommending guideline sentences. The probation office, which is an independent authority, looking at these cases and the facts related to them, are not recommending guideline sentences. This is a particular area where the commission has seen an enormous amount of disparity and has in fact asked Congress to come back and address to, to help judges who are looking at these cases to be able to rely on the guidelines. Which Congress has declined to do. Senator, in that case, we have the statute that Congress has enacted concerning penalties, and we have judges who are doing their level best to make sure that people are held accountable as they need to be in our society in a fair and just way. 